I'm not even supposed to be here today. What is that from clerks? Welcome in Bishop on air on this Friday, December 22nd was not going to do any programming today, except for if the Southern District of Illinois federal judge issued his ruling in the federal firearms licensees of Illinois and other plaintiffs seeking to delay the state's January 1st deadline to register banned firearms attachments and um, 50 caliber magazines. So the January 1st deadline still in effect. Welcome in Bishop on air. I'm Greg Bishop. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, rather uh, interesting to see this ruling come here on the uh, Friday before Christmas. But as Judge Stephen McGlynn, the Southern District of Illinois indicated, he was inclined to not issue a preliminary injunction, saying it could make things messier. Uh, and he wants to get to the merits on these things. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Uh, you see here the uh, headline from the center square um, where I work full time taking a vacation day today. Uh, by the way, so uh, with the headline vowing to address merits, judge won't block the January 1st gun registration deadline. So you go through and uh, you read this, you'll also be able to get yourself a copy of the actual ruling, which uh, will go through some of the uh, the key quotes uh, that uh, Judge McGlynn has here. He even cites uh, Center Square news articles that I pr produced over a certain period of time, including from yesterday in his uh, decision here. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, check this out. All right, so the deadline for Illinois' gun ban registry remains in effect after a federal judge denied to delay that January 1st date. Federal Judge Stephen McGlynn granted the state's motion to dismiss the preliminary action, but without prejudice, urging the court to address the merits of the challenge. Earlier this month, in the Southern District of Illinois in East St. Louis, McGlynn heard the case Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois and other groups seeking a temporary suspension of the January 1st deadline to register banned firearms to state police. That registry opened on October 1st. And we've seen these uh, these uh, challenges, these legal challenges issued against the, the state uh, on, a, on a variety of different grounds. We had the consolidated arguments on Second Amendment cases, uh, and the question was, you know, being brought to the courts on a preliminary injunction. McGlynn, back in April, issued a preliminary injunction on the Second Amendment charges. That went up to the Seventh Circuit, and on that preliminary injunction, McGlynn, uh, he had that in place for six days until the Seventh Circuit essentially put a stay on McGlynn. Glenn's injunction, meaning that was not in effect while they heard the case. And while the U.S. Supreme Court was being asked about these things as well, you had the Seventh Circuit consolidate all these cases together and look at the preliminary action, not on the merits. And I think that that's important here because the merits very much still are at play. As Judge McGlynn says in his ruling Friday, he denied the plaintiff's group standing and dismissed their due process and vagueness arguments against the gun ban registry. While denying the preliminary action to block that January 1st deadline, McGlynn reasoned that such action may also create further delays in the litigation when the constitutional rights of the citizens demand an expeditious resolution on the merits. So clearly, uh, Judge McGlynn, again, reiterating what he said during oral arguments on December 12th, that uh, he was inclined to rule against the injunction because it could make things messier. He goes on to say that uh, Illinois, um, the arguments that were made uh, that uh, uh, the state's arguments against the preliminary injunction was because the plaintiffs are continuing appeals on the earlier question of that preliminary motion on Second Amendment grounds. Uh, but again, those are all preliminary things, not based off the merits. And going further, uh, McGlynn also said the government argues the Seventh Circuit has already held that such a claim is unlikely to succeed on the merits. Citing recent reporting that I did for the Center Square, McGlynn said the FFL plaintiffs do not allege that specific individuals did not have notice of the requirements because, again, the arguments are, did they get due process with notification? Do they have standing uh, and uh, are the rules too vague? Those are some of the things that McGlynn uh, breaks down in his 34-page um, opinion uh, issued today. But uh, he goes on to say the FFL plaintiffs do not allege that specific individuals did not have notice of the requirements. They only argue that the Illinois government did not give adequate notice 
as evidenced by the number of FOID card holders who have filed endorsement affidavits. While McGlenn dismissed the due process claim and the FFL, uh, others lacking standing, uh, the court would address their arguments on the merits in order to adequately develop a record. He even said that during oral arguments. He wants to get to the merits of this on the issues, not on preliminary actions. The January 1st deadline does not by itself cause criminal penalties to automatically attach and issue, the judge said. And that's true. Even the state police recognize that. They say that come January 1st, it's not like all of a sudden they're going to know you didn't register. Uh, it's ultimately something that if you're out in public and you're found to be in possession of a firearm, say you're driving around and uh, they pull you over and they see it and they say, well, you haven't registered that. That could be an infraction, could lead to a criminal charge. So the judge, you know, just pointing that out, saying that uh, the January 1st deadline does not by itself cause criminal penalties to automatically attach an issue. Rather, the government must prove that the individual in question knowingly possesses those items in question. The judge goes on uh, to talk about the uh, the vagueness arguments. Uh, he even noted that he did recently uh, just dismiss the arguments of vagueness brought by Thomas Mag in the Langley case. So he, he writes about that in his decision today. But on the vagueness arguments, the judge said the rules the state has published so far were not constitutionally vague. He said rather. They are clear in what they prohibit. Serious issues with the Second Amendment aside, the emergency rules and PICA more generally may well be unconstitutional as determined in this court's review on the merits. However, they are not vague. While they may be very well determined to be unconstitutional is an as applied challenge on the merits and in a trial setting after discovery has been completed. The FFL plaintiffs cannot plausibly allege that they are facially void at this stage in litigation. So again, McGlynn's saying that he wants to get to the merits on this. Uh, you can't necessarily you know, argue vagueness uh, and, and these types of things at this stage. He says it's clear what the rules are. Whether or not those rules violate the Constitution, that needs to be debated on the merits. Uh, so moving on, uh, McGlynn further says that uh, he's interpreting the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals ruling back in November uh, on the Second Amendment grounds on preliminary issues, saying that uh, it's the lower court's uh, directive from the uh, appeals court to advance onto the merits of these claims. So again, McGlynn really making clear that uh, it's time to get to the, the merits on this. He goes on to say that the court will expeditiously conduct a full review of the legal challenges to PICA on the merits. Uh, this also points toward foregoing further preliminary wrangling and going straight to an exhaustive review of PICA and the emergency rules on the merits. In the weeks ahead, McGlynn noted things could develop. Additionally, the Illinois FOID card holders level of compliance with the registration scheme will be discernible within mere days what's today it's the 22nd of december january 1st is that deadline to register mcglenn continues this overall level of compliance will likely be highly relevant to the review of certain claims on the merits uh, and he noted as of uh you know the publication of the order uh, which is Today, uh, he notes that uh, uh, as of uh, today, 8,143 8, individuals out of 2.4 million Illinois FOID card holders, 34% have submitted affidavits. So, uh, again, McGlynn putting that in the legal documents. Uh, further, um, the judge's ruling discussed the role of government. It goes on to say that government exists to serve us, not lord over us. The Constitution places limits on government's power without guaranteeing, while guaranteeing freedom and liberty to the people. The Second Amendment guarantees are fundamental and belong to the citizens. The Second Amendment acknowledges a right of the people, not a license to be issued or denied by the government as it sees fit. McGlynn, before issuing the order denying the plaintiff's preliminary injunction and granting the state's motion to dismiss the notion of uh, in, in the notice and vagueness claims, the judge said that the merits will endeavor, uh, when he reviews those merits, he will endeavor to faithfully apply previous U.S. Supreme Court precedent on the Second Amendment. And any entries, uh, entreaties to ignore, erode, or infringe the constitutional rights of the people 
will not gain traction in this court, McGlynn Rhodes. So you can go and read that. If you follow me on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, uh, and here on YouTube, I'll even link to this story so you can get a, access to the uh, actual document. Vowing to address merits, judge won't block January 1st gun registration deadline. Uh, if you go to the centersquare.com slash Illinois, you'll be able to find it. Uh, but scroll down, you can read for yourself the uh, the, the, the PDF of, uh, of the judge's orders. Uh, and I'll tell you, I mean, the first, uh, you know, 15 pages or so. It's a lot of legalese. It's a lot of what standing is and different court precedents. But uh, once you get to page 15 or 20, uh, it really does pick up and uh, gives you a good overview of uh, uh, some of the arguments and, and why he came to the decision he came to, including a couple of different instances of uh, the judge citing uh, work that I've done covering this case step by step. Uh, and that was kind of interesting to see here. You can uh, see for yourself. Uh, he, he cites, uh, you know, a story that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, but he also cited a story that literally got published yesterday, uh, but he gave today's date for it. Uh, so interesting to see that. Uh, it's always fascinating to find where my work ultimately ends up. Uh, but uh, that's the latest here on a day that I was uh, going to be on uh, taking a vacation day. So hopefully you guys have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day. Happy holidays. Uh, we'll see you back here taking Tuesday off. All right. So I promise I'm not going to do anything on Tuesday, but we'll be back full throttle there on Wednesday with the latest you need to know about the ongoing uh, gun and magazine ban and the registry deadline January 1st. We'll also discuss new law coming to effect and so much more you guys have yourselves a wonderful christmas holiday like subscribe follow along be sure to check out the store below if you're inclined to support the program you can do that that way we'll see you guys later all right